An airport bungle in the United States has left a six-year-old Queensland boy without a potentially life-saving bone marrow transplant. Andrea Crothers is at Queensland Children's Hospital. Andrea, his mum, says it was his last option. Yeah, Carl, and we'll be hearing from Shailen Eggleton on the Today Show in just a moment as she shares what is a heartbreaking story. She says they've tried nine experimental treatments for her little boy, Matteo, but so far none have worked to cure him from this condition. It's a genetic disorder, which actually means that his white blood cells are unable to fight off certain types of infections. At the same time, he's also fighting another syndrome where his red blood cells are attacking his body. That's what triggered this global search for a bone marrow transplant. They thought they'd found one in the United States. You can imagine their devastation when they were told the news it was left on the tarmac. Unclear how long it'd been there. They're now in limbo as they wait for it to arrive in Australia and see if it is still viable. Poor Carl. little fella. His mum is coming up on the show in a couple of minutes. Andrew, thank you. This is a heartbreaking story. We want to introduce you to a special boy this morning. This is Matteo, a six-year-old Queensland boy who's in the fight of his life. Currently battling a genetic disorder, his last hope for treatment is a crucial bone marrow transplant. Thankfully, a match was found in the US, giving hope to Matteo's family. But then, a devastating blow. Instead of being loaded onto a flight to Brisbane, the marrow was left on the tarmac. Joining us now, Matteo and his mother, Shailen Eggleton. Thanks so much for your time. We are so sorry this has happened to you. How are you holding up? Uh, we're holding up the best we can. Um, just waiting, just waiting to find out when this will arrive and when transplant will be. And you've got your beautiful Matteo there right with you. Exactly. How's he doing? How are you, Matteo? How are you? He's good. Oh, little bub. I mean, this is something that, you know, to get a transplant like this is so difficult. The bone marrow is hard to find. The fact that it's been left behind, how does that even happen? That's my thing is biggest thing to understand is how could something such like a big medical protocol and procedure be left behind at an airport when it should technically be supervised 24-7 until it arrives in Australia and to the hospital where my son is. Shailen, it's not good enough. Have they explained why? It's not. We haven't received no reasons why. Um, nothing, pretty much. I'm going to be doing all that digging myself because it's unacceptable. He's fought three and a half years as it is um, for his life and for someone to be so neglectful and Aww. just naive Aww. when it comes to such a thing like this. Like this is This is what he's waiting for and someone's... Someone's just left it behind. And talk us through what what it's been like for you as a family. You know, to find a match yeah. like this is difficult enough. How long have you been waiting? So we got... So we, through the last 18 months, we've trialled nine different things, um, like being plasmapheresis, different chemotherapy drugs, adult chemotherapy drugs, but just nothing has worked. Mm. Um, we were told at the end of last year that I've got to make the decision whether to do transplant or not, um, knowing that it's our last option and... Looking how well he is, I no way I could stop treatment. So my option was to go with transplant. It did take a little bit to find a donor. Our first donor actually rejected and declined and said no. Mm. And this donor has taken a while. And, you know what I mean, this person in America has actually gone out of their way to go on behalf of us. So it's not just affected me. Like, it's someone else that has actually donated to Mateo and now that's been left behind. So... It's a lot for us. Well, and that's the other thing, isn't it? I mean, there's so much goodwill out there, people wanting to help those in yeah. need, and then something like this happens. I mean, it, it's... You know, when you've got a sick child, any mother, any family member wants nothing but the best for them. You know, you almost yeah. put your life on hold for the best outcome. Well, you know what I mean? Like, we've, like I said, we've been fighting three and a half years, so every day it's either hospital or, you know what I mean, medication. He's got his little pump at the moment, like, you know what I mean? So we're constantly, constantly up for the hospital. So it's just... I just don't understand. I really just don't understand how something like this could happen. What does this mean, Shailen, for Mateo's treatment now then? Yeah. So as of the current moment, we were supposed to be admitted on the 28th, so next Tuesday, to start conditioning where he would... All his chemo to pretty much wipe out his... ..because we don't have cells in Australia ready, so we can't... We can't do anything that um, he's still just having chemo to keep him going. That's how we're prolonging at the moment, just with chemo. From all the blood we've been giving him, he's actually got a massive iron, significant iron overload. So it's just, that's what we need. We need the transplant to try and move on and try and try and fix him because it's unfair, it's unfair on him. 
Absolutely, it's unfair on him. It's unfair on yeah. you as well. What is it like watching your son battle through this? It's hell. It's it's something like you just you don't imagine as a parent. You don't imagine your kid being sick, not for three and a half years, going through all this, trialing transplants, trialing you know, I mean, adult chemotherapy drugs. It's just like why in this big world we're in today, why isn't anything working on him? Like it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. And what is a day like for Matteo? Um, so a day is, so we're about to have some medicines shortly. He'll have his medicines. He's still a bit tired, so I think his HB's um, a bit low. It's been a bit low the last few days, so it's just probably just laying around today, resting. We have the nurses come out today. They'll um, change his pumps and everything. And then hospital tomorrow for chemo and then hopefully more answers. And what about you, Shailen? How are you holding up? Uh, you've got to, yeah. You've got to hold up. That's just part of being a mum facing this, I guess. You've got to, you've got to do it, yeah. It must be tough. There must be times where you just want to reach breaking point. There's been many times, um, but at the end of the day, you know what I mean, he's, he's fought this biggest fight and he's the one that gives me strength to be able to get through each and every day. And what do the next few days look like? What's the resolution here? Um, I just hope we get answers, to be honest. Like, it's, it's unacceptable unacceptable to begin with. Hopefully when we go to Brisbane tomorrow we have more answers. Hopefully... We do have a bad connection there at the end, Shailen, but know that our thoughts are with you guys and we hope for a very speedy resolution to this for both you and beautiful Matteo as well, Carl. What a strong woman. Mm -hmm. You've just got to as a mum. Yeah. Lovely words from her. Courageous. We wish them all the very best. Hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our <laughs> YouTube channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?